Hey guys, welcome back to the sculpture. I wanted to take the time to show you the process of scooping out a water-based clay. I have done it in a couple other videos, but sometimes I lump it all into one whole thing when I'm actually sculpting. But in this one, I am doing the process right now. I try to find flat areas that I can easily add clay and cover them back up. And I use some of my scooping tools. So this is the first hole that I'll be do digging. And I'm just taking a wire tool and carefully digging out as much as I can. I try to get into the sculpture and try to reach as high as I can and to the bottom and to the front and to the sides. But you do not want to get too close to the edge. Leave about one inch of thickness throughout your sculpture. This model if you look at the shape, it's like one triangle. So you can really vent this very well all the way to the bottom. Even from this hole, I can take my scooping tool and hit the wooden platform that I'm using to sculpt. And that is the key because once this dries out a little bit, I can hold the sculpture up, turn it to the side and scoop out even more from the very bottom. And it's gonna have a very wide hole at the bottom that's going to aid in the venting. So as you guys know, you cannot have a sculpture this solid uh, fire in the kiln. You might be able to fire it, really, but it's a lot better to have nothing inside. Because when water-based clay gets dry and you leave it at, at uncovered, it's going to shrink a little bit. There are shrinkages for various clays, I believe, the clay with grog is about 4%, uh, and I believe non-grog, uh, it's about 6%. So various clays shrink. That is because they have water, and when the water disappears, of course, it's going to contract. And if it's solid, that means that it's going to contract and it's going to firm up. So it could cause cracks, any sort of thing. So you want to keep that in mind. The clay that I'm doing this right about now is very soft. Often people might want to wait a little bit more until it's just a little bit stiffer, but I'm going to do it here because this pose is very simple to do. You're not going to have a lot of problems with it falling off. Of course, as you're digging in, do not bend the outer shape because the clay is still fairly wet and you can see that I am kind of pushing things around but I'm being very careful not to affect much of geometry before. When I first started to doing this method I would actually go too much and I would come out the other side and often that's fixable but you want to get in the habit of correctly judging the depth. So I have that hole and now I am going to be digging another one in the thigh. You don't have to get towards the lower part of the leg but this thigh is very thick so my goal is to connect this hole to the first hole that we just made. So I'm going to scoop it all out. I don't want to create any sort of weakness in the joint of the hip. So you have to be very careful not to make this hole connecting to the first hole too large because Often, that's a very fragile point in the human body um, and in the clay itself, the sculpture. You want it to be a little bit stiffer, but if you're going to do it, make sure you're very careful and don't dig too much. And of course, I'm going to try and scoop towards the base as much as I can because that's going to make it easier down the road when I remove more from the base. Now I'm going to take the other leg and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I am going to dig towards the knee a little bit, but it's better to dig towards the hips rather than the knee. Because once it gets to the knee and the lower leg, it's not too thick. You're really just removing clay from the thickest parts of the sculpture. You can see the amount of clay I've removed already from the inside. It's quite a bit. Now I'm going over to the first hole and I'm going to make sure that I dig in 
and I connect the hole. So I should be able to touch the other hollow from the legs on each side. So remember, all of this is going to be connecting. You cannot leave like a, a patch that's hollow inside closed together with clay because we're going to seal this up shortly. So I actually take the stick and sometimes I put my finger on the other side to make sure that it does come through. And now we're going to do a little bit here on the shoulder and I don't need too much but this square I'm going to connect it to the hollow of the first first hole that we dug and I'm going to dig a little bit towards the chest. She's a little bit chest heavy so we need to make sure we remove a little bit of that. I've gone as deep as I can in the shoulder. I'm just going to remove some of the loose clay and now we're going to connect it with the other one. I'm going to dig the same sort of hole in the shoulder. It's actually more of the scapula but I think that's going to be easier to cover up. This might seem daunting to do when a water-based clay but think of the alternative. The alternative is that I create this in clay, oil, or water clay, and then you have to go through the process of mold making, which is a lot more complex, a lot messier, and really you're better off just creating one work of art that's solid and will last you a lifetime. Water clay, when it's fired, it is long lasting. It, last for centuries so there's not going to be any problem with this being a permanent sculpture and you'll get something out of it i have seen so many people do oil-based clay and then they just leave the sculpture on shelves for perhaps a day that they are actually going to turn it permanent i would much rather have this it's like a one work that the artist itself himself has worked on it so to me that's pretty valuable plus I'm a fan of terracottas from antiquity so I like the idea of using the same process that old masters have used all right it is time to seal up these holes I know it looks very difficult but it's not I want to take it some of the clay that I just dug out because it's really nice and soft and this is a lot of clay that you, I removed from the inside and I will be using this on a future sculpture. But I'm going to use the same clay to seal up the holes because it's the same sort of softness as the entire sculpture. So why not? So the first step is to get it really nice and watery. We want to be able to get this to be super wet and we're going to create some texture there. This is one thing that I learned is if you roughen up the hole quite a bit, uh, it creates a little bit of a vacuum. So when you add the clay on top, it has to be about the same consistency as the surface. So make sure that you get it really wet and often I, I wet the clay that I'm using myself, but because my hands are wet, I'll be able to use that. So I just put it over the hole and you want to make it nice and thick as well, same as the leg. And then I'm just going to push it in. And this is not the next uh, session I do this. I'm actually going to add a little bit more clay on top because we're not done with the sculpture. We are just sealing this up. So this is why I do this at this point in the sculpture rather than later when all the final details are there. And that's pretty much hole one. So I'm just going to take care of a little bit of the texture. Now for that left shoulder, I'm going to get that really nice and wet. Get my clay. Remember, when you add the clay on top of it, be careful not to push in the clay too much. Or you don't want to create any air pocket. And there we go. That was like magic. And that's pretty much the process of taking care of a water-based clay and all the hollows inside. You do have to do this pretty often for water-based clays, but it's worth it, I think. All right, guys, I hope you learned something. Make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.